come back. Uh, this is lecture 22. So, uh, up until now, we have been discussing various topologies of amplifiers and we were also uh, discussing how to make different voltage control with different control sources namely the voltage control current source, the voltage control voltage source, current control current source and current control voltage sources using a single transistor circuit right. So that is what we have been doing till now. So what, we, what I would like to do in this uh, in this lecture is to is to bring you back to one of the transistor properties that we have been taking for granted and see its impact and the possible solutions in the uh, in the circuits that we traditionally deal with right and and, and we will take examples of the common source amplifier uh, to see its impact right okay so let's get started so uh, so if this is our mos transistor this is drain this is k this is source so what is the current voltage equation in saturation that we uh, uh, that we are using till now we assume that the drain to source current this is ids is half mu n c ox w over l pgs minus threshold voltage whole squared right uh, what was the genesis of this equation? The genesis of this equation was if I look at the cross section of a MOSFET, if I take you back to the uh, one of the earlier lectures where we were introducing the cross section of a MOSFET, what did the cross section of a MOSFET look like? Uh, it looked like this. So, let us say you have a we have a P type wafer, right, we have a P type doping wafer, a P, P type wa uh, wafer which uh, on top of which we have let us say introduced or deposited some oxide right this is oxide which acts as a dielectric on top of that we have introduced a layer of metal this is our gate and how did we introduce a source and drains we had to dope something on either side with n plus with n plus uh, dopants and we call one of them drain and one of them source and the one that is at the higher potential we call it as a drain and one that that is at the lower potential we call it call it the source right so this is drain this is source let us assume i mean under the constraint that bd is greater than yes okay so in in saturation what was the condition of saturation? Firstly, the channel had to be on. So, BGS had to be greater than threshold voltage and and VDS or rather I can as well forget about the source the requirement, requirement was the VD should be greater than equal to VG minus threshold voltage. And what was the genesis of this? The genesis of this was the fact that the charge distribution in the channel that is just under the oxide the charge distribution was something like this right so these were electrons all the way uh, in the channel and at the drain channel junction right at around here at around here we were having pinch off here we are having pinch off okay and this was the electrical length or physical length of the channel right so this physical length was getting translated to to the length in the in the current equation of our mosfet okay so now as it turns out what happens is if you increase the drain voltage so let's for this for for this purpose let's assume that the source is grounded right and gate is connected to some some higher potential so that inversion has been established okay and let's assume that the drain is now connected uh, to a higher potential so that 
this condition has been satisfied. Now all you are saying is, let us assume that we are increasing the drain voltage. So if we increase the drain voltage, the assumption that we took was, was the fact that nothing is going to happen to the channel anymore because, because the channel has been pinched on, right. Now as it turns out, as it turns out, uh, that is not entirely accurate. So one can appreciate the fact that if I increase the uh, if I increase the drain voltage, the lateral electric field that is the electric field going from the drain to the source inside the channel, right? So let's say I just want to keep with the difference. So the lateral electric field is going to increase, right? So it, so even though there is a pinch off, even though there is a pinch off around around the uh, around the drain channel junction, the increased electric field will have an effect and what is that effect? The effect will be, the effect will be to shorten the length of the channel, right. So what, what, what ends up happening is that the, the slope of the, slope of this channel increases and maybe it the channel, uh, the starting point of the channel on the drain side gets pushed from the, uh, from the physical junction of the uh, gate and, uh, 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 of, uh, of the gate and the drain, but it gets pushed towards inside, inside the channel, right. So since this happens, so we can say that, let us assume that this is, uh, because of this increase of electric field, the channel got shortened by delta L. If the channel got shortened by delta L, what will be my new IDS? The new IDS, uh, I mean you can write out the uh, full device uh, physics models, but the, uh, the easier hack is to say that what I will do, I will now, uh, instead of plugging in the physical length of the channel in the current voltage equation, I will, I will, uh, I will introduce the actual length of the channel that is the shorted version of the channel, right, shortened version of the channel. So the IDS now becomes half mu n c ox w by L minus delta L times V over drive whole square, okay. So I am expressing Vgs minus V threshold voltage as V over drive. So this becomes the uh, new new equation, new current voltage equation for the transistor in saturation. So we can massage this equation slightly. So what we will do, we will say that if delta L is much much less than L, right. So L minus delta L can be expressed as L1 minus delta L over L, correct or rather I can say 1 over L minus del this, since it can be expressed like this. So I can use Taylor series and say this is equivalent to 1 plus delta L over L by L. So this is approximately, right. So now if I, ex uh, if I plug in uh, uh, these modified expressions into IDS, what should we get? We will get IDS equal to half mu n c ox w over L times V over drive squared times 1 plus delta L over L, right. So this becomes the modified, uh, this becomes a modified e uh, equation of our, of our uh, MOSFET in saturation, okay. So we can do one step better, right. As it turns out, we can do one step better. So what is the cause of delta L? The cause of delta L was the fact that just at the, uh, if we increase the drain voltage, if we increase the drain to source voltage, right, beyond the pinch off point, then the effect was that of shortening the length of the channel. 
so delta l is the amount of shortening of the length and delta the cause of delta l is increase of the drain to source voltage beyond the pinch off point right so what what we can further approximate is we can approximate delta l as we can say that approximately delta l is proportional to delta vds where delta vds is the increase in vds over the pinched off vds right so till pinch off we don't have any the transistor is not in saturation right till pinch off the transistor is in linear region just when you hit the pinch off voltage that is vd becomes gate voltage minus threshold voltage you you hit saturation beyond that beyond that if you increase vds what is the effect the effect is the shortening of the length of the channel right so that's why we can approximate delta l as proportional to delta vds right uh, and this is this is again an approximation because we, we we purposefully are saying that it is a directly proportional it did not be directly proportional as it turns out it's not directly proportional but as long as we are dealing with small changes in delta l for small changes in vds right so then we can we can assume that uh, Again, this good old Taylor series approximation, we can neglect the higher order terms if delta L is a function of VDS, right. So, what I am essentially saying is delta L is actually a function of delta VDS and we are neglecting the higher order terms. If we neglect the higher order terms, then we can say that delta L is proportional to delta VDS. This is approximately. This is an approximation. Okay. So when I say that delta is proportional to delta VDS, then we have to introduce a proportionality constant, and the proportionality constant that we normally use is called lambda. We call this lambda times delta VDS. Okay. What is the unit of lambda? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so let let me not do this right now. So let let's uh, let's write it out fully, right? So let's call it let's delta call it delta L is equal to eta times delta VDS, where eta is some proportionally constant. And let's plug in this value in the IDS IDS expression. So what is my new IDS expression? So IDS becomes half mu n C ox w over l b over drive squared right times 1 plus delta l over l where delta l is eta over l times delta vds correct so delta vds i should characterize as over vds equal to vgs minus threshold voltage right on top of this so in other words in other words this becomes ids is equal to half mu n c ox w over l v over drive square 1 plus some constant because l is a physical length of the device eta is some proportionally constant so we call this lambda some constant times delta vds okay so what is the unit of lambda the unit of lambda is clearly volt inverse right okay so what 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 impact does this have on the current voltage characteristics of our device so so note that the current voltage characteristics of the device in the absence of this extra term was so it was linear it, it was in a linear region for 
till the pinch off point that is VGS minus threshold voltage and after that this was flat. What was it flat with? It was flat with a value of ID sat where ID sat was this voltage. Correct? So this was the ID sat. Correct? But now what is it telling us? This is telling us that there is a extra term on top of ID sat. So when at when v when VDS is exactly at VGS minus threshold voltage, uh, then we are here. We are we are just on the dot because we, the linear region current equation hasn't changed. If we increase, if we go beyond uh, uh, beyond this point, the current is no longer flat at ID set. The current will increase linearly. Right. So that's all. It's just saying. Okay. So now what impact will this have on our incremental characteristics? Clearly, you see that the Y22 for this characteristics will not be 0, right? So that will be a significant that will have a significant impact on our current voltage characteristics of the device. But before before going there, let me talk about one more important thing. And the one that, the thing that I wanted to talk about was the following that this equation can further be approximated. So, as it turns out, this, this slope, the slope of the red line that I talked about is, is, uh, is not significant. At least it cannot be significant because if, if, if that slope is very steep, what will happen to Y22? Y22 will, be, will become higher and higher. And which essentially means that we will not be able to make an amplifier. So, the, what our fellow device physics uh, colleagues or the device engineers have done is, is to ensure that we get devices in which the, the even though there, there will be a slope in the ID sat in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the saturation region characteristics, but they will not be significant enough. The other thing that we should keep in mind is the fact that this point is even though uh, I have shown it in such a way that such a way that this is quite far from the this is quite far from uh, the zero zero point from the origin. This point is not significantly away from the origin. That will be uh, I mean uh, in most practical devices it uh, it will be few I mean less than hundred millivolt, right? So, uh, so hence, since that, since that is the, uh, I mean, one might argue that if VGS is higher, VGS is larger and larger, then obviously this voltage will be, uh, this this knee point will go to the to the right further to the right. But uh, even though that is the case, but in most practical devices, you won't be biasing your VGS with very large voltages, simply because you see that if you supply, uh, if you if you uh, bias it with very large voltages, then you, there is a tendency of the transistor going towards towards linear region. So, so in most practical cases, you you limit the overdrive to 100 millivolt or few hundreds of millivolts, right? So, so the point that I am trying to make here is that this knee point is much closer to the origin, and you have a lot of room on the right of the knee. So that is why this equation is further approximated as as instead of using this term delta VDS, we get rid of delta and we say that, I mean delta VDS is approximately equal to VDS because this extra VGS minus threshold voltage we can, we can neglect without incurring too much of error. Okay. So essentially what we are saying is a new IDS equation is essentially this, this is half nu n c ox w over l v over drive squared 1 plus lambda VDS. so this is the famous current voltage such uh, equation of a transistor in saturation in the presence of the effect that causes 
reduction of the channel or the modulation of the channel based on the applied rain to source voltage and this effect is often called channel length modulation right this effect is called channel length modulation and often abbreviated as CLM okay 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 so now uh, so let's spend some time understanding the effect of of channel length modulation and as you have already guessed the primary effect of channel length modulation will be on on the y22 of the device right so ids since ids is how mu n c ox w by l v over drive square 1 plus lambda v ds what is y22 y22 is del id del v ds right and at some quiescent operating point of i d of now the operating points are vgsq vdsq we cannot now neglect vdsq because it is the, uh, the current actually depends on vdsq so this becomes uh, half mu n c ox w over l v over drive square times lambda right so this can further be approximated as lambda times i t okay 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 so now uh, uh, you will see that in many cases in many cases uh, we uh, i as it turns out this the the, the the values of the lambda are not significant by not significant what i mean is lamb, if i take a typical device uh, lambda is approximately i mean lambda is often less than less than 0 0.1 volt inverse right in devices with l greater than 180 nanometer okay so if this is the case right so what do you think is the significance of this term yeah, significance of this term on the absolute ideas as it turns out the significance as you can see the significance of this term on absolute ideas is not very high under the assumption that lambda vds is much less than one right so let's say vds is one volt lambda is 0.1 volt so lambda vds is one point is 0.1 essentially right so so for the calculation of ids right we can often neglect the effect of channel length modulation right so what i am essentially saying is that we can neglect the effect of clm for calculating ids in the first order this is obviously unless otherwise mentioned or required sometimes you will see that we are interested in very accurate values of current then obviously we cannot neglect but to a first order if we are okay with some uh, values of current which are not exactly accurate to the second or third decimal places we can essentially say that okay fine let's let's get let's not use clm right so because it helps our maths uh, and helps our calculations okay okay so if that is the case what is y22 y22 can be lambda times ids okay and as it turns out we have a better expression uh, for uh, we have a better symbol for y22 y22 is a generic two port uh, network parameter we call y22 as gds that is the conductance between the drain and the and the source
okay so what is what is the other parameter that can get impacted the gm of the transistor can also get impacted right so what is the gm gm is to to ids to vgs which is equal to mu n c ox w over l vgs minus threshold voltage times 1 plus lambda vgs vds right so so this is often i mean so if if uh, if we can approximate the total current by neglecting lambda vds right so what is generally done is to say that while approximating gm we will not use the will not use the uh, effect of lambda vds in most most devices right so approximation is approximation since lambda vds is much much less than one we approximate gm as mu n c ox w over l egs minus special voltage so essentially the expression for the gm remains unchanged you can use whichever expression you want uh, it doesn't really change okay but we cannot make these approximations while calculating gds because because when you uh, if we assume gds to be equal to 0 or y2 to be equal to 0 and we introduce gds the difference can be starved right i mean you can neglect let's say 10 with 1 with respect to 10 but you cannot neglect 1 with respect to 0 you cannot neglect anything with respect to 0 right so sometimes it, it you will see that it's not uh, very prudent to neglect neglect gds but in some other cases you will see that it might be prudent to neglect gds right so we will we will look into that as we as we as we go forward okay so now what we'll do uh, so let's in the next part of this lecture we will switch our attention to the impact of channel length modulation on on our small signal small signal incremental amplifier right we will we'll go back to a common source amplifier and then we will see what impact does the channel length modulation have on on, on its operation okay mm -hmm.